America is a capitalist country. Americans promote free speech. In America, there is a rule of law. Free speech and press are the reason why America is the biggest economy in the world. This was the narrative pushed on Indians in the pre-internet era while selling the American dream. India, on the other hand, was sold as a place of hyper-conservatives working in unison to scuttle the voices of people. Indians travelled the long and arduous journey of guilt trip only to realise that Gangadhar hi shaktiman hai. Analyzing the way big tech is operating all across the world tells us that the companies operating in these geographies are dictatorial in their base instincts. Take for instance Twitter. It is the same company whose boss had come to India to lecture us on a maligned, derogatory, castigating and misinformation-led term called Brahmanical Patriarchy. Four years down the line, the head of the think tank behind that idea is getting roasted by the US Congress. Hi and welcome to TFI Post. I'm your host Ananya Sharma. Let's begin with the video report. Former Twitter executives are in the American Congress now. Given the fact that currently Republicans are the majority in the House of Representatives, this day was always on the horizon. During their stint at Twitter, these same Twitter executives allegedly worked to compromise Republicans' chances in electoral politics of the USA. The measures included shadow ban, censorship of selected tweets and finally banning the account. The policy was applicable to Twitter accounts all across the world. The head of this censorship regime was a famous or rather infamous lawyer called Vijaya Gade. In the house, she was asked about her criteria of banning multiple accounts and posts. One of them is the Hunter Biden laptop story and Twitter censoring the report published by the New York Post. In the midst of a fierce 2020 election campaign, the New York Post published a story implicating Joe Biden and his son Hunter Biden. The images in that article were allegedly from a hacked laptop of the son of the current US president. As soon as the New York Post story was shared on Twitter, the account was banned. In an event which indicates that it was a clear attempt to protect the Biden family, the users who shared this story were also blocked, suspended and restricted. Twitter reversed the decision regarding censoring the story. But it did not immediately reinstate New York Post's account presumably fearing that the tabloid could have more explosive stories under its sleeve. In her statement to the House, Vijaya showed regret of her act. Vijaya said, Twitter informed the New York Post that it could immediately begin tweeting when it deleted the original tweets, which would have freed them to retweet the same content again. The New York Post chose not to delete its original tweets. So, Twitter made an exception after two weeks to retroactively apply the new policy to the post's tweets. In the hindsight, Twitter should have reinstated the post account immediately. Everything is amendable in hindsight, which is why this argument does not hold any ground. But hindsight-based crooked stories of redemption and forgiveness is the only thing that can save Team Vijaya from the wrath of the public. These people went on a hounding mission to suppress and censor genuine voices that they personally did not agree with. No matter whether it's politicians, the common public, sports stars, conspiracy theorists or even doctors, parameters were the same. The policy lacked nuance, a reflection of how censorship actually works. Take for instance, how Twitter banned genuine medical experts during the COVID crisis. They had a fixed criterion ban anything not in consonance with whatever the health autocrats said. Apparently, it was done in the name of a smokescreen called protecting individuals. Twitter went on to ban people having recognized medical expertise from universities like Harvard and Stanford. The list of banned accounts include Jay Bhattacharya, a medical professor from Stanford, and Dr. Robert Meloni, a virologist and co-inventor of mRNA vaccines. Before grilling Vijaya on it, Republican Nancy Mace ensured that the people get to know that the lawyer has no medical expertise. After establishing it, Nancy asked, What makes you think you or anyone else at Twitter have the medical expertise to censor actual accurate CDC data? To this, Vijaya went on to cite the defense of protecting individuals. Nancy cut short her defense and said, You guys censored Harvard-educated doctors, Stanford-educated doctors, Doctors that are educated in the best places in the world and you silence those voices. 
in subsequent grilling by Mace, it was revealed that without having any expertise, Gade went on to flag American government's own data as misinformation too. That is the height of absurdity. To be a bit kind to the social media platform, it was not always like that. The platform was started as just another company and soon metamorphosed into an information amplifier platform. Initially, people fed up with mainstream media used it to put forth their dissent regarding the government or any other authority on the platform. As the negative engagement pulled numbers, various nefarious elements jumped in. These included terrorist groups like Islamic State of Syria and Levant, also known as ISIL. Vijaya joined Twitter in 2011. Her initial censorship was focused on banning ISIL-related accounts as the threat of radicalization was spreading all across the Western world. Thousands of related accounts were banned and suspended. Over the next few years, the saga of bans continued. Problems became big for liberal lobby after Trump and his team extensively used Twitter to amplify his voice. Trump had literally rattled the social media platform with his tweets. There is a term called Twitter diplomacy. Donald Trump is believed to be the math scientist who was the progenitor of this. He and people believed to be on his end of the political spectrum broke the myth of the internet being the voice of liberals. As Trump got exclusive massive support, conservatives all across the world also started to join in. Naturally, the threat of marginalization of liberals was there. And when the threat has legitimacy of public opinion, censorship is the only option. And that is how Twitter's censorship regime turned towards politics. Bans after bans after bans followed. Prominent bans included Roger Stone, Michael Flynn, Paula White, Jared Taylor, Jason Kessler, Alex Jones's accounts. At Real Alex Jones, Infowars's account, at Infowars, some of them were justified, while some were totally political in nature. But hey, that is how censorship operates in the initial days. The head of censorship takes power in their own hand by telling people about a few bad guys. Once the population is convinced about the alleged intention of the censor chief, they use it to appropriate absolute power. Within no time, they start using this power to censor genuine voices concerned with established political, social, economic, environmental and even human health related issues. The model is well applicable to Twitter under Vijaya as well. Its bias was well exposed when Jack Dorsey visited India. Understandably, Vijay Gade joined Twitter chief on his sojourn. There are two reasons behind it. For one, she was senior in Dorsey's team and had been involved with Twitter's policies for seven years. The second reason is that Vijay is herself an Indian by origin. She was born in India to a Telugu family. Even if her family moved to America, it would be non-commonsensical to say that she was not aware of the socio-cultural reality of India. So Jack picked her up for the trip. It turned out to be the exact opposite of whatever Jack would have thought. In their bid to virtue signal, Dorsey and Vijaya sat for a round table with journalists, activists, writers and Amrita Tripathi of Twitter India. The activists they interacted with about their experience on Twitter were Dalit activists. While Dalits do not hold any enmity towards Brahmins, these Marxist-infested activists certainly do. In addition to that, human male is also their enemy. They justify this male bashing by terming it as patriarchy, a term whose definition is not in consonance with reality in India. Just after the meeting, Dorsey and Vijaya were handed a placard with a hateful slogan on it. The slogan was, Smash Brahmanical Patriarchy. These kinds of calls are rooted in genocidal instincts. That is the kind of propaganda Hitler had used to create anti-Jew sentiment before beating, burning, gassing, shooting and hanging them in the gallows of Nazi Germany. Vijaya being educated from liberal arts was not a tech nerd like Jack and knew all of it. She still went on to not advise Jack against it. Resultantly, Jack was happy to get picture clicked with the placard. One of the participants had tweeted the photo with Dorsey. No surprises that infamous journalist Barkhadat was also in the photo. As soon as it went live, a Twitter storm kicked off. Rajiv Malhotra, India-born American author, took a strong objection to what he termed as demonology of Brahmins. And now, you are going to understand 
why I criticized her use of hindsight earlier. Responding to Dr. Malhotra, Vijaya wrote, I am very sorry for this. It's not reflective of our views. We took a private photo with a gift just given to us. We should have been more thoughtful. Twitter strives to be an impartial platform for all. We fail to do that here and we must do better to serve our customers in India. The response by Vijaya is a clear attempt to protect her image by using hindsight as justification for Twitter's irrationality. What she was actually doing was testing the waters. She seemingly agrees with such a stance but can't say so in public because of the non-violent nature of modern states. Pushing it in a subtle way was an attempt to check people's response. Thankfully, people in India were waking and did not allow that hatred to gain legitimacy. The issue was raised in a famous Joe Rogan podcast too. Tim Pool, a centrist American, grilled Vijaya and Dorsey on Twitter's liberal bias. Initially, Vijaya and Dorsey were doing wordplay by claiming that American accounts and voices they censored deserved it. Suddenly out of nowhere, Tim Pool reminded both of them about their act in India. Pool treated Brahmins and American conservatives in the same vein. Stating out these facts, Pool said, in that sense, even in other countries, you are accused of the same things that you are being accused of by American conservatives. In later years, Vijaya's team got more and more authoritarian in their response. The number of Indian accounts they banned can't be even counted. Once, it had logged out the then IT minister Ravi Shankar Prasad. While Twitter's policies do not cause much storm on ground-level political reality in India, it does in a big way in a country of its birth. Vijaya deserves a big share of the blame. In the third decade of the 21st century, Gade's team developed the guts to ban even a sitting president of America, namely Donald Trump. Apparently, it has something to do with Capitol Hill riots. At the same time, and after the takeover of Afghanistan by Taliban, the terrorist group was thriving on the platform. They do even today and are busy buying blue ticks. What a travesty of justice. Modern day dictators do not come in suit and boot and speak in a lousy tone to amplify their command. Instead, they use squeamish tones and the excuse of motherly treatment to justify their power grab techniques.